to talk about scales for just a minute here. I work with so many students who are scale resistant. They don't want to learn scales. So many of my students started playing some sort of piano when they were younger, classical studies, and they learned to dislike scales. And if you return to the music some years later now and you're trying to play in a more fun way, play by chord concept, play standards, play by ear, play blues, it's not really necessary to play your scales in the old-fashioned classical way, which was two hands going up and down, whether you're going two octaves, three octaves, whatever. Absolutely not necessary for your progress if you're getting back into piano at a little bit of a later age. All you need to do is play with your right hand. This hand doesn't have to get involved. Your left hand is not going to do any scale work. It's not going to do you any good, really, unless you're going for a very high professional level. I played professional piano for over 50 years, and I don't do a lot of scale work on my left hand. I did train classical when I was young, but generally this hand's kind of just taking it easy, and the right hand's doing all the fancy work. So what I want to recommend is that you just play all of your scales in one hand, one octave. Just go up and down, slowly, any fingering that you want to use. What's important is that you play the scales smoothly. Any fingering, just go ahead and try to make it smooth any way you can and play all 12 of them. Very important because you're going to use those scales when you're making your little fills in between melodies and doing any kind of improvisational meandering around. You're going to do it with your scales. And here's how you do it. Play a root note on your left hand of the scale you're going to play. Like if it's C, and play the scale up and down. If coming down is a little difficult at first, just play it going up. If you can do that in 12 keys, you've made a major accomplishment. Then go to your next scale, and let's say it's D flat. Don't worry about the fingering. Use any fingering you want to. Just try to play the scale smoothly with any fingering that you've taught yourself or that you're comfortable with. Because you're playing popular piano by chords, by ear. You don't have to worry about doing some sort of uh, classical, beautiful fingering. I know a lot of professional pianists that don't play with beautiful fingering, but they play beautifully. So we'll continue up through all of the scales. to that note, let it ring. All the way up. If you can do this, it's a great accomplishment and a reasonable goal reasonable goal to reach for. Then you're back at C where you started from. Okay, let me tell you something else about the scales. If you play the first five notes of a scale, let's take the C scale to show you. Those are the first five notes. I'm using the first five fingers. There's only seven notes in a scale. You've only got two notes left over. Play each scale with just the first five notes of each scale and come back and add the other two notes later. So you're going to do the similar thing you did by playing the whole scale, but go like this. One, two, three, four, five in the fingers and in the notes. also an exercise for the hand. It builds the hand strength and the hand coordination. You don't have to go fast, but you can do it several times. When you do it like this, you'll feel your hand, the muscles and the tendons and the bones in your hand, you'll feel them start to kind of work as you're trying to get the notes even. It is important to try to play them evenly rather than in a ragged fashion. Just go up and down and move. 
move on. So you're playing most of the scale when you do this, and it's a great hand exercise, great coordination exercise. You're working on smoothness in your scales. So, and smoothness in your playing. So those are the first five notes. Get to the other two notes any way you can. Change the fingering, do whatever you need to do, but get at least those first five notes down. And it will be a great accomplishment to play the first five notes of all 12 scales. Try this. When you start to go through the scales like this and feel like you're getting familiar with them, break them up like this. Play one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three in every scale. It'll help you get familiar with it. Again, it's a hand coordination exercise. We're gonna use the first three fingers only when I do this. I'll start on C. So I'm going one, two, three. Next note, one, two, three, one, two, three. I'll go to D and do the same thing. I'll hold down the D note. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And try to tie them together. And so they're all continuous going. So you're working for smoothness and trying to keep your hand coordination, trying to train your hand coordination so that things are smooth to E flat. And so forth through all the scales. Again, very musical. You'll feel like you're really doing something. You're accomplishing something if you can do this with all 12 of your scales. How about this one? Let's take every other note in the scale and listen to how it sounds. I'll start on a C. So I'm taking every other note, and I start on the move up one scale step, move up one scale step. Now I'll do the same thing in a D flat. You want to go slowly at first, D. get you really familiar with your scales. Not difficult, you just got to concentrate a little bit and you've got to remember where the scale notes are. So you want to go up and down your scales somewhat and get familiar with them before you start trying to skip around like that. And do that on all of your scales. On an F. If you skip them in kind of a fun fashion, it can create a very nice sound. Here's the F. back down. I'm going to do the same thing. Next scale step, going every other note. And you can go up and down past one scale range. You can keep going up and down like that. It's fun. You create a nice fun sound doing that. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this scale minute here, and I hope you'll give it a try.